Two, chapter two review. Much like what we were doing a couple pages ago, we are just describing how it's transformed related to the parent. We just don't have to, um, we just don't have to graph them. They're done for us. So my parents are all, I always know where my parents are. And then the question is, how is G transformed? For me on number one, it looks like two things happened. It looks fatter. And what else? And it slid down too. So it got wider and translated down too. And I remember being like, you don't have to worry about calling it a vertical stretch or a shrink. I told you guys you could do wider or narrower. That was fine with me. Now, I did notice on this one, and I always kind of pay attention to what's going on at the bottom of the, of the parabola. These are the same two parabolas. So when I decided that, yep, these are the same shapes, I looked and said, all right, that went four units to the right and two units up. So this is just a translation for right to up. Now those are the types of things you'll do those, you know, previous pages once you got them graphed. Boy, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I hope you guys don't have to go through all the graphing because this is a much better time saver, I think. Now, in this next one, it looks to me like it is the same shape, the same size at least. So what I'm gonna say on this one is I've got a, what do you think here? Reflection over x-axis. Reflection over x-axis. And then they slid it down, trans, yep, and then translate down four, yep. The uh, grid is going by twos. No equations or anything here, just what do you see? Now, for each one of these next ones, you need your parent quadratic. We wrote it in a couple pages ago. The parent quadratic for each of these, zero, zero, one, one, two goes up to four. There we go. It's the parent for this one, the only ones I'm putting on for the parent for this one are zero, zero, one, I'm sorry, two, four, and negative two, four. There's the parent. What I know about this without even going into my table of values in my calculator, you guys, this is saying take that parent and drop it down seven. And so I'm literally just gonna go because I recognize that this is just a translation down seven. Watch this, two, four, six, seven. Two, four, six, seven. I'm just literally moving each point down seven. Two, four, six, seven. Same shape and everything, it just slid down seven. When we go over to this next one, zero, zero, two, four, negative two. You, again, you have that parent function. I already the table for it a couple pages previous. And then I've got a table of values for you guys on this one. I put it in y equals and found three points that are meaningful to graph. The vertex is at zero, negative six. And then those other two points around it will give our shape. What I know about these is that third should make it fatter and that negative six should have slid it down six. Sure enough, negative three, negative three, positive three, negative three, zero, six. Yeah, it got wider from the one third and the minus six translated it down six. I'm gonna cross Thank that one you. off you guys. The graph is really ugly, it gets really small. I'm crossing off that next one. I think we got plenty done with those. It's super skinny. And the one thing I do want to point out about out this one, you guys, that negative inside, it reflects it over Y and you don't even see it. Like a negative inside reflects over Y. I'm going to move down to these last ones and I'm still dealing with those same rules that we were talking about. A vertical stretch is outputs. So outputs times four by four. And a reflection of the x-axis is outputs times negative one. 
Those are the rules. You want to make sure you guys have all those. And I don't remember what page in my book it was, but it's absolutely in your notes. Like there's a couple of pages that have all the different transformations and what happens to them. So then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take this quadratic. First things first, I got to do outputs times four. That means I multiply the entire function by four. So four times x squared minus three is going to bring me to four x squared minus 12. There's my, it just stretched by a factor of four. But then I got to take it again and transform it some more. G of x at this point now needs to be reflected over x, so that means I have to multiply the whole function that I ended up with by negative one, and that'll flip it over x. So in the end, I wind up at negative four x plus 12 with both of those transformations. Number eight, one unit down is subtract one from outputs. Three units left, three units left. Go on to the left. I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna add three to the inputs. And how do I know it? Well, I looked these rules up all, all up earlier. These are all rules that I'd be putting right here. Jamar, take one of my peas and go take this back. I just, there's no way I'm gonna get that to him. Um, so where's my function? This is an absolute value function. Let me go and take it and do what I said here. I have to subtract one from the outputs. So that means I just take my whole absolute value of x minus four. It's got a plus two. I just have to subtract another one. So then that's gonna leave me as absolute value of x minus four plus two minus one is gonna be plus one. That's where I'm at now. Now I've gotta go take it and do the three units left. So I'm gonna take this function now, where I left off, and I need to add three to the inputs. So where I see x, I need to add three. There's already a minus four there. And on the outside, I still have my plus one from the other. And I'm just gonna go and simplify that one to three minus four is just gonna be x minus one. The absolute value of x minus one plus one. So going through both and simplifying my equations as I do so pause buttons are going to break. Label the axis of symmetry, x-intercepts and your maximum and minimum. Let me give you guys a table of values for number one. Um, I'll give you a table of values and actually I'm going to do the axis of symmetry. No, we'll do them together. We just won't do them all. Table of values. I just put this equation into my y equals. And when I went into my y equals with this equation, I found that this vertex was at zero, negative one and zero. And when I put that in the center of my table, then I had negative three, four, negative two, one, and then negative one, zero, zero, one, and positive one, four. That pattern that repeats, we're used to this. And then to go put this on a graph, I just need to plot it and then I gotta label some stuff up. So in the case of this one, I always like to start with my vertex, negative one, zero. Negative three goes up to four. Negative two goes up to one. There's my vertex, zero, one, and one, four. Now it says straight up, label the vertex. So actually I got it right here. Vertex is negative one, zero, it's right there. What's the axis of symmetry? Well, the axis of symmetry is the line of symmetry that the parabola can be folded around. And it's the x axis of symmetry is always the x equals equation where the x value of the vertex is where it comes from. And then the last piece they ask for here, is this a maximum or a minimum point? And what is it? It's a minimum. And the minimum value is gonna be the y value of the vertex and that's gonna be zero. So once you know your vertex, you've got the answers to the other two. Your y value of the vertex is your minimum or max, depending on how it opens, and then your x value of the vertex is your axis of symmetry equation. Now, um, in problem number 10, when I put that one into, and I don't know if you guys remember this, but um, this one is actually, I'm gonna go, go at this one. This is in what we call vertex form. And you can go look up what vertex form is. It's all about the H and the K. 
what I can see by looking at this, the H value is going to be positive 4, the K value is going to be negative 5. If I know that this vertex is at 4, negative 5, that tells me that the axis of symmetry equation is going to be x equals 4. I also know that this parabola is going to open down because it's negative, so it's going to have a maximum, and the maximum value is the y of the vertex. And let me give you guys just a couple of points where you could go graph this later. You've got what you need for that, but here's just where you could make a picture. And if you put your axis, if you put your xy axis, if you wrote on it like I did, it's no big deal because I'll tell you guys right now, this parabola winds up kind of down in this corner. This parabola winds up down here. When you go and graph those points, it opens down, it winds up over here. Um, just a couple things that I want to remind you of. If it's not a friendly vertex, and I feel like this doesn't come up actually too often. If it's not a friendly vertex, you can't see it in the table, or you want to get your axis to symmetry, I want you guys to remember that your AOS equation and the x value of the vertex comes from doing the opposite of b over 2a when we have our quadratics in ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, all that equal to zero. Your axis of symmetry equation, your x value of the vertex comes from doing this. And if you had to find your y value of the vertex, once you know the x, plug it back in. Plug in x to find the y value of the vertex. Yep. Uh, if I remember right on your test, though, your vertices are easy to find from the table of values. I'm not trying to trick you. Um, I'm going to move on from this section, too. We've covered a couple of them. And you got anything extra here. You don't have to do anything with those either. I did a few different ones with 